So if you see people up here while you're in here, yeah. then you can. That's why I just wanted to wipe it out for you. Hey everyone, um, good morning. Um, for those uh, in Minneapolis, apologies on the early start, blame, blame the league. Um, but we're gonna get going uh, in, a, in a couple minutes. Um, Sarah Perez um, from Lynx PR um, is gonna help me moderate today um, while, we're, while we're running around this morning. Um, so you'll hear from her throughout the morning as well. Um, we're gonna start with uh, Crystal Dangerfield in a couple minutes, we'll wait for some more people to get up. Uh, but if you have a question, um, please uh, message it in the chat for everyone so Sarah can see it. Um, and for those who have Sarah's cell information, uh, you can text it to her um, as well. But let's um, mainly use the chat function um, if you'd like to ask a question. So if you have, if you have questions, let's start throwing them in the, uh, if, you be, if you wanna ask a question, let's start throwing those in the chat right now. Thanks everyone. You don't need to put the actual question in there. Um, you could just say, I have a question. We'll give it one more minute um, and then we'll get started. All right, we'll start with Katie Davidson. Uh, this morning, again, we got Crystal and then we'll, the rest of the schedule was sent out last night. Um, so thanks again for coming everyone and we'll get going. Katie, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Crystal, thanks for doing this this morning. Um, my question is just what have you learned from your fellow guards on the Lynx team so far, not even at training camp, but in Zoom calls beforehand? And if anything, what do you feel like you've been able to teach those guards too? Um, I think the, the biggest thing I've learned, you know, is exactly what uh, Coach Reeve wants, you know, learning the pace, where to take the ball, and, and you know, learning and figuring out what's the ball where and what the strengths are. Um, and that's really just all it's been. I don't know wh how much I've been able to, you know, give them being new and everything, but I still just bring my intensity in and things like that. Thank you. We'll go ahead and have a question from Ian. Hey, Crystal, how are you doing? Hey, how are you? No, not bad. Um, what's it like getting to play with Fee again? You got you got to play with her in college, and now you're back with her. Yeah, it's been pretty fun. Uh, it feels like we haven't really skipped a beat. You know, it's been been a year and everything, but I still know her tendencies. So she still knows mine, and it's been fun. Alexa, you can go ahead with your question. Hey, Crystal. Great to see you. Um, one of the things I remember you mentioned when you first got drafted was how much the Lynx's winning culture was something that you felt like would be similar to UConn, and um, that was something that really kind of appealed to you. Um, I'm curious how that's, you know, how you've seen that so far the first few days of training camp now that you're actually here with the team and the coaching staff and you're able to see it all in action. Right. Um, I think it was the morning practice, um, I don't know, two a days. Uh, we had like a little, you know, relaxed kind of moment we where our intensity wasn't the same. And, you know, we were fumbling the ball around a lot. And, you know, coach broke it off immediately. It was like, I see, like, I have to be hard on you guys right now. I was like, no, like, that's just the culture. You know, it's not, we still have a lot of time to, you know, take care of things in training camp. We want each day to be um, perfect, you know, get 1% better every day, each play and things like that. Go ahead, Katie. Another question, just 
um, what's it like not only being a rookie and coming on to a brand new team, but also you're just in this brand new setting that even your veterans don't know like how to, they, I mean, it's all brand new to them too. So I'm not sure how <laughs> different that is than a regular rookie. Yeah, it's um, been kind of, I, I think the word is just weird, you know, it's unprecedented and um, we're all just trying to figure it out together, you know, teams as well as within the team. And it's, it's been hard to, you know, navigate a couple of things, you know, just making sure what, like the first week, what was quarantine really going to be like. Um, and then now it's, you know, still trying to figure out our social justice, um, how we're going to take the approaches with that and, and other things regard, in regards to that. So it's been interesting. It's been a learning curve for everybody, an adjustment period. Uh, but I think our team is, you know, handling it pretty well. Let's go with a question from Jay Fuller, zero one. Yeah, Chris, well, this is a Tim Fuller from New Haven Registration. Can you just run me through, do you take some time after your season ended to kind of mentally regroup and get ready for the next stage? And then can you run me through how excited you are for, to get this thing going? Um, after the college season ended, I don't think I really took any time or anything like that. It was kind of, it didn't seem real to me. Just like even now being here doesn't seem real. You know, it's like we're in a bubble and um, it just seems so isolated and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's had to be like a quick, you know, mental turnaround. And I think I'm doing okay. I mean, I, I do wish the, the college season had ended different, but now I'm living my dream of being a pro. Next question from Cindy. Cindy, did you want to go ahead with your question? Good morning, Crystal. Um, I was wondering if you could share impressions of Cheryl Riga as a coach, um, similarities and differences with Gina Lauriama, please. Um, both, you know, I would say perfectionists, you know, just want, want things to be done the right way um, in a sense that you do it so well that, you're, that you can't get it wrong, not that you just don't, don't mess up, just can't get it wrong. And uh, it's attention to detail. I think that was one of the very first things she mentioned on day one of practice was the attention to detail that we would take into training camp. Um, and, and that's really just been it. And every day, I think we've gotten better at practice because of it. Thank you. We do have time for a few more questions. If anyone, Alexa, it looks like you have one, so you can go ahead. Has there been a moment since your time in the bubble where it really just has like set in that like this is your the start of your pro career you're in this really bizarre situation in the bubble like this is real it's like actually happening um not i mean it happens every day like i wake up like even yesterday yesterday we had a day off and it's like i'm able to be on my phone a bit more and i still see people you know, out like doing the, like I said, like social ju justice stuff. Like I follow Renee, so she's doing a whole lot. And it's like, we're still trying to figure out like what we can do inside the bubble. And it's like, I wake up and we're isolated. Like we're in our bubble, we can't go anywhere. Um, that is still trying to set in. But as far as like playing, I think that set in when I got to Minnesota, you know, I was there for, for uh, two weeks and it's, it's weird to me because I still see myself being pretty young, but you know, this is what I wanted. And so I had to like transition my mindset really quickly and you know, carry myself like a pro and act like I belong. We do have time for a couple more questions. If anyone wants to throw that in the chat, um, so I'll give you a couple minutes. Go ahead, Jay Fuller. Okay. Just curious, you're around in WNBA by being at UConn. Was there a player, was there a time when you were younger, maybe before UConn or during UConn, where all this started, you started really having memories of, okay, this is something I really want to be a part of my future, someone you may look up to to help you get to this point? Could you um, the last part? I couldn't hear you. Sorry. Someone that you looked up to, maybe someone that you wanted to emulate to get to where you are right now. 
Um, maybe not completely emulate, but you know, look up to obviously, you know, Maya more. She's obviously not here, but she was definitely a big person, especially going to UConn and things like that. So uh, if I had to say one person, it would be her. And how much do you think your UConn experience will prepare you for, for, for what's coming ahead? Um, so far, I think it's done me well, you know, as far as the intensity and practice, um, attention to detail and, you know, really understanding what coach wants for the most part. If there are uh, differences um, as far as like, specific things like on offense and stuff like that plays play wise, but um, attention to detail, intensity, um, coaching styles, I think I'm used to for the most part. We'll go with the last question from Eric Beck before we switch over to Lexi. Hi, Crystal. Um, just with all of this stuff happening with COVID right now, was there any, I know you're just getting started with your career, but was there any point where you considered uh, not playing this season? Not really. Um, I'm young, fairly healthy, um, and I just wanted to play, so no, not really. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Yes, it is. Hi. I'm trying. Can you help me? What? I'm not your vlog director. Yes, you are. Okay. Hi, Lexi. Hi. Uh, we'll, go, we'll go ahead and start with uh, Charles. Who has a question? Go ahead, Charles, and unmute yourself. Good morning, Lexi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, a couple questions. Just one is, uh, can you define what combo guard means? It seems like you and Rachel are being tagged as that. And how do you see yourselves playing together uh, on the floor together? And you're, especially, you know, since you knew each other from Connecticut time, uh, just talk about just that that position and how that's been defined for both of you. Um, yeah, I think um, just the game in general is changing, you know, becoming more of a positionless uh, game of basketball. So I would, uh, you know, consider a combo guard, someone who can run the team from the one position, but also consistently be a scoring threat um, anywhere on the floor. Um, you know, I can shoot really well. Rachel can shoot really well. So I think um, us on the floor together, um, we're going to be able to spread the floor, make Sylvia's life a little bit easier. Um, and then people won't be able to just chase me around all the time because they're going to have another shooter to be worrying about as well. Do you feel more comfortable this year around, uh, even though it was a rush type of fashion, as opposed to when you came in last year and you was trying to learn everything that was going on in Minnesota? Oh, yeah. I'm way more comfortable, uh, considered, you know, kind of like somewhat of a vet now. Um, it's nice to be in practice and know what's going on. Um, knowing everybody's tendencies, you know, at least from the, you know, like Cheryl's standpoint. Um, but yeah, to be able to finally return to a team, you know, it feels really good. Thanks very much. Good luck. Thank you. We'll have next question coming from Katie. Hey, Lexi. Um, you've already used your platform, your blog. Um, you've talked to other people. You've obviously been on Twitter and Instagram to just advocate for racial um, justice and social justice. I'm just wondering, of course, the league is going to do stuff too, but I'm wondering what your expectations are for us reporters to try and continue the conversation and follow your lead too. Um, I just think to make sure that um, the message doesn't get lost. I know a lot of people were talking about how sports could potentially become a distraction for what's going on right now. Um, so I think for you guys, you just have to focus on the things that are important. Um, if a player has something to say or something that's weighing on them, I feel like, I mean, we have, we all have our own platforms, but if any of you guys, you know, peep something or see something that a player has to say, you know, just share it, retweet it, um, you know, 
share it with your colleagues, things like that. Thank you. Uh, go ahead, Eric. Hi, Lexi. Hi. So with all the stuff that's going on in the world right now and with um, several players opting out for the season, why did you think it was important to play the season? And then what do you personally want to accomplish this year? Um, I think it's important for, well, me personally to play because, um, you know, I just put in a lot of work in the off season. So, um, you know, I feel like I just needed, you know, to be able to put all this work that I put in you know, to use. I mean, whether we had a season or not, I was still going to work extremely hard in the off season. Um, but also, um, like Katie just said, we all have something to say. And I feel like in our league specifically, because it is so small, our voices are better together than separate. Um, so I feel like coming here with a bunch of women who have platforms, who have opinions, who are brilliant, who are creative and talented, um, I felt like I mean, this is not a better place uh, to, you know, speak about what's going on. Also, I feel like this is probably one of the safest places in the, in the country right now um, to play sports. Uh, you know, we were playing, all of us were playing at our own respective gyms. You know, you, you see the spikes all over the country. So I feel like this is one of the safest places to play basketball right now. Next question from Neil. Hi, Lexi. Um, seems like you're going to get um, a bigger opportunity to play uh, this season. I'm just wondering, uh, kind of, what you're what you're trying to show this year. You know, you, that you're you know, more than just a shooter. What kind of elements of your game you're trying to uh, put out there this year with more playing time? Yeah, I think everyone has forgotten that I ran the one all through college. So, I guess just to show everyone that I am a competent point guard um, in the WNBA, and I do understand that for point guards specifically, the transition is a little bit longer and maybe a little more difficult than, you know, other positions. Um, but I'm just trying to prove that to everyone, but also to myself, because I was moved out of my natural position um, when I first got to the league. So, you know, making that transition back um, is going to be a, a fun, but, you know, definitely a huge learning experience because playing the one in college is very different from playing the one in the pros. Um, but I'm super excited, but I'm still going to shoot the ball. So... <laughs> that's not that's not going anywhere. Katie, you can go ahead with the question. Um, my last question is just what advice do you have for new players on your team who are coming into not only a new team, but also just a new experience that none of you have ever been through? Um, I, I mean, there's similarities compared to you coming to the team last year. So what advice do you have being somewhat in that? situation um yeah I think that this year is just it's different for everybody so I think the biggest thing that they have to understand is uh everyone's learning as we go um you know us returners are learning how to play with the new players and the new players are learning how to play with us we have new coaching staff um personally I feel like this is not a better situation for you know people trying to learn um because everyone's learning so I think some mistakes aren't going to be as glaring because you know, this is a different type of situation, but just be open to learning, be a sponge. I mean, that's what I always say. I think that's what helped me the most these last few years is just being open to learning, um, making mistakes, learning from them ultimately. Um, just have fun. Um, this is a really great group and we are already having so much fun together, spending a lot of time with each other. So I'm really excited for this season. We have a question from Jace. See, I'm wondering what you saw from Karima last year and just how she handled her injury and still, you know, what role she played, I guess, on the sidelines. And then uh, what's it like to kind of have her back in action this year? Yeah, Rima, um, she was great last year. Um, I know that injury was really hard for her, but, you know, we couldn't tell um, how much it was bothering her, you know, how upset she was that she wasn't able to be out there with us. She became a, a great leader from the bench. Um, you know, I know being injured and being redshirted is not the same, but you get a completely different perspective of the game when you're watching on the sideline. Um, so I think she's brought so much of that insight uh, to us this season. Um, it's just really nice to see her moving, getting back to herself, because I remember watching her play in Dallas and what type of player she is and what she's capable of. So I think she's getting back to that. So it's really great to see that from her. We do have time for one more question, if anyone still has any.
think you're all set, Lexi. Thank you. Yes. Hello. Hello. We'll have the <laughs> first question coming from Katie. Hi, Shanice. Thanks for doing this this morning. Um, my first question is just, what have you been able to teach the less experienced guards so far? Not even just at training camp, but in prior Zoom calls. And what, if anything, have you learned from them so far? Yeah, I think right now it's more of me learning from them. Um, this is a new organization. I'm learning the culture. Um, how everything runs here, how you lace your shoes up before you even go out onto the court. Um, so for me, I think it's just getting to know everyone. Um, we're still building chemistry, and I'm learning more than I'm teaching at, at, at this point. We have a question coming from Neil. Hi, Shanice. I'm wondering what uh, Cheryl has uh, told you about what your role will be this year. Um, yeah, Cheryl has told me to be myself. Um, she's big on everyone being comfortable with who they are. Uh, she said that she recruited everyone for their special abilities and you don't have to do anything outside of yourself. So for me specifically, it's being a playmaker. Um, you know, I'm versatile, so she could put me at the one or put me at the two. Um, but more, more importantly, she just wants me to play basketball and be myself. Go ahead, Eric. Yes, Janice. Um, so with all the stuff that's going on in the world right now and with several players opting out of the season, why was it important for you personally to play this season? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a great question. Um, for me, I missed the game. Um, I haven't played in the WNBA season, uh, a full season in a very, very long time. Um, so I just, I had an itch for it. Um, so I don't care if we were playing in the middle of the Sahara out in this season. Um, but I, I also think that it's an opportunity for us to continue to use our platform. Um, we're basketball players, but that's not the only thing that we are. But at the same time, it's hard to push something when you, people don't recognize you on your platform. So I think it's important for us to continue to, to use it. We have a question from Jace. Shanice, it seems like there's a number of guards on this team who, you know, are comfortable playing the one, playing the two. How many different combinations, I guess, do you think there could be in the backcourt uh, this year? And I guess, does it matter um, the defined role you have? Maybe if you're out there with, say, like, I don't know, Alexia or Rachel or somebody at, at the same time, like, hey, I'm the one right now, you're the two? Yeah, no, I think it's going to be lead guard initiate. Um, I don't think it's going to be like a set in stone, Lindsey Whalen's bringing the ball up every time. No, I think it's going to be more so, hey, whoever gets it, fly. Everyone else gets, get, get wide. And then we'll see how everything goes from there because Lexi's a shooter. Rachel's a shooter. I can knock down threes. We all pretty much can put the ball on the floor. So I think it's going to be exciting and fun to watch. But at the same time, it's going to be hard for the opposition because you never know who's going to bring it up. Go ahead, Neil. Shanice, I'm wondering with this, you know, uh, you know, situation you have in Florida, the whole bubble or whatever you want to call it, uh, does it, what does it remind you of 
<laughs> yeah, sure. We, you know, what does it, it remind you of from your basketball career? I know some people have said like AAU or college or different stuff like that. Does it remind you of anything from the past in your career overseas, anything like, anything like that? Oh, for sure. Um, it definitely has an AAU overseas feel to it um, because literally you're practicing and you can look over and it's Connecticut or it's Atlanta. And that only happens in AAU when you're hopping off the van, putting on your sneakers, and you're looking at the person next to you doing the exact same thing. Um, but it also kind of reminds you of overseas just because of like the restrictions and not being able, being, not being able to travel um, on your own. So I would say overseas and AAU. But I don't, I mean, we're, we're used to this. You know, our, our WNBA season is what, four or five months max um, during the summer and majority of the time we're across the water playing seas or figuring out what we want to do with life after basketball. So I think it's, I don't think it's a hard adjustment for many, for, for, for many of us. We do have time for a couple more questions if anyone else wants to uh, throw into the chat. Don't be shy. Go ahead, please. <laughs> Denise, you talked about, you know, just how much you wanted to go play and, and not being able to play a full season in a while. What, I don't know, has there any, been anything that you've, I guess, learned or picked up in this time period um, that will help you now playing in a full season, like things you've picked up over the last couple of years um, that you think can translate to your game? Yeah, uh, for me, it's just the mental endurance. Um, I think I've learned more about myself these past couple of years than I have throughout my whole life. Um, when you're faced with ev 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 adversity, um, you learn a lot. And you either learn if you're going to fly or if you're going to sink. And uh, for me, I've learned that I can almost do anything. I can, I can overcome anything with the support of my mom, my brother, and my sister. Um, you can pretty much get through anything in this life. So I've learned that. Last call for a couple more questions. Is there ever a point where you wonder, like, hey, am I going to be 100% for an extended period of time and get my chance to really do this again the way I want to? Absolutely. That, that thought is still there, you know. But at, at, at the same time, like, you've put in so much work and you have to trust it. You, 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 you just have to. Um, or you won't be able to play at a high level again. So, you, so our, our trainers, they throw you out there. They, they say you have to go out there, you have to try. So even if you fall down, it's better to fall down now than on ESPN. <laughs> and how have you felt just kind of, I don't know, at the start here of camp? Uh, good, good. Um, Shro does a great job of mixing up skill work and running. Um, so we're able to get in our skill work. We're able to learn, learn each other, 5-0, uh, no shot, keep moving, see how everybody moves off of one another. Um, it's been absolutely fantastic. And I cannot wait to get, to, to get going here. Thanks, Denise. Thank you for your time today. Um, I think you can move to your next station if Freeman is around. And we appreciate your time today. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I don't know if I just, I just get up and go. Great.
Hi, Kayla. Welcome to Media Day. Hello. Thank you. I can't see who's talking. Yeah, so it's going to be Sarah. She's going to be moderating oh, okay. for us, okay? So we will open it up for questions. If anyone has questions, feel free to throw them in the group chat. Uh, go ahead, Katie. Hey, Kayla, thanks for joining us today. Um, my first question is just, you've maybe not gotten the amount of experience playing in the WNBA these last couple of seasons that you'd prefer, but what do you think um, your experience playing for the Canadian senior national team, um, how do you feel like that experience will benefit what you do with the Lynx? Oh, I think it'll help tremendously. Um, playing at the national level, you get to play against some of the best players in the world from all over. So. Um, I'm very thankful for the opportunity that I had with Team Canada because it just taught me how to compete at a high level. Um, just the basketball IQ, um, just the experience that I was able to get from playing um, both internationally and with Team Canada with some of the most talented players in our country. So I think that that experience will transfer over to um, my play in the league here with the Minnesota Lynx. Next question from Neil. Hi, Kayla. Um, you know, Sylvia Fowles is one of the best defensive players um, probably in league history. Um, now you get to play on the same team as her and, 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 and stuff. So, you know, what do you, when you look at her and you watch her play, you play the same position, like what sort of things are you trying to pick up from her? Maybe you've already talked to her about, like, how is, how is that uh, relationship going as far as, you know, defensively with Sylvia Fowles? Oh, it's been great. I've been, we've been in training camp for like, three days, four days now, and I've just been a sponge. Um, she's been teaching me so much. She is a wealth of knowledge, and I'm just trying to take everything that I can and learn from her because, like you said, she is arguably the greatest post player to have played in the league, an incredible defender, and I'm going to take everything that she says, soak it in, and use it so I can help our team to be successful and so I can improve as a player as well. But I've been enjoying it so much. I've, she's been great. I've been learning so much. We'll go back to Katie for another question. Uh, just piggybacking off of what Neil asked, um, it's been kind of difficult these last couple seasons for backup centers to find valuable minutes playing behind Sylvia. How do you feel you'll be able to break that mold this year? Um, coaches told me to come in here, just be myself, to play my game. And if I can contribute on defense, help our team to be successful both defensively and offensively and just play my game. Um, that's all I'm trying to do, and then to back up still and help her so that she can get the rest that she needs so that she can continue to uh, can play um, at a high level like she always does. So um, I'm not focused on so much of, um, I guess, so much of the minutes. I'm just focused on being the best contributor that I can and being, uh, with the time that I get, being productive and helping the team to be successful. We still have time for a couple more questions. If anyone has one, you can put it in the group chat. Go ahead, Katie. Um, was there any hesitancy to actually play in the 2020 season this year, just given everything that's going on? I mean, I'm human, so I'm pretty sure you've probably heard the same answer from everybody. Like we have. We're a bit apprehensive because one, there's a virus out there still, like COVID-19 hasn't disappeared. It's still out there. We don't know the long-term effects of it, um, what happens if you catch it. It's been different for everybody. So there's that concern. And then with the racial and social and uh, justice that's been going on in the world as well, um, that's very important to us, but I'm so thankful that the league is using um, our season and dedicating our season to social justice, which I think is awesome. And then also we're athletes. We want to play basketball. We want to compete and play at a high level. We want to be with our teammates again. So um, there's a mixture of all these different emotions, but I think the league has done a great job trying to put together a season that um, allows us to address the social issues. They're trying to do their best to keep us safe in this bubble. And I appreciate them for trying to do that and allowing us to um, still have some of the season. So um, I appreciate the, the league for what they've tried to create and um, just taking it one day at a time. Thanks, Kayla. Thank you. Go ahead, Neil. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering about, uh, about you know, so, so far what you've had in, in training camp, um, you know, regarding, you know, not really having, you know, you know other players to play against necessarily in, in, in like five-on-five situations. How have you kind of navigated that and, and, and tried to, you know, with the, 
you know, not having the guys to play against and that kind of thing. Like, how have you navigated that with, with what you've been, you know, had there in the bubble so far? Uh, we're playing against each other. So just like we would if we're playing five on five from another going up and down the floor, we're just taking it to each other, which is helping us to um, get ready, I think, for the season to be able to compete. And um, yeah, so we're, we're making do, we're making, we're making it work. Last call for a couple more questions. All right, thank you, Kayla. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, have a good one. Bye. Honey, what you honey butter chicken biscuit? <laughs> hey, Fee, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, we will kick it off with some questions. If anyone has it, just go ahead and put that in the group chat. Go ahead, Katie. 
And Nafisa, um, my first question is just, what advice do you have for these newcomers on your team who are not only um, brand new to a your Lynx team, but are brand new to the situation you guys are going through in Florida and that your veterans are obviously, they're trying to get used to that situation too. Uh, for being on the team, I would just tell them, I've been telling them to just be a sponge. Uh, it's really hard to come into a new program and let alone, you know, in the situation that we're in. So I've assured them that regular season isn't like this. Um, Minnesota is really nice. We love where we're at and to just take this in stride. Um, everyone's in the same boat being in Florida and having this season be really um, crazy. But just in practice, be a sponge. Um, just try to pick up everything as quickly as you can. Watch what people are doing. Listen to us and the coaches. Um, we know it's difficult, but we're all, we all have your back. We're all here for you. And we're all gonna get you know, through it together. Next question from Ian. Going off of that, um, obviously you have your point guard from college with you. Can you talk about what it's like to be back with Crystal again? It's nice to be back with Crystal and uh, it just feels comfortable. I played with her for three years. So um, we know what each other likes to do on the court, where we like to be, where we like the ball. So um, it's been really nice to play with her again and kind of get into the flow of that. So just, you know, trying to help her through things and uh, the point guard, I mean, is one of the hardest spots because you have to know where everyone is on the court. So I think she's, you know, taking it in stride and uh, trying to learn from her mistakes. Today's only day four of practice for us. So I think everyone's doing really well so far. Thank you. Next question from Kent. Hi, Fee. Um, Coach has talked a lot about how she wants to have more shooters on the floor, more people capable of shooting the three, like she's going to have more chance, and, and they got Rachel who can shoot it. You've been working on it. Do you think that fans are going to see a, 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 a pretty strikingly different approach offensively in terms of spacing the floor this year? Uh, I think yes. I think we definitely do have more shooters. Um, it's what coach likes anyway. She likes for us to all be able to shoot the three. And I think because we do have more shooters, she's going to expect it a lot more. So hopefully you guys will be seeing it a lot more. Uh, she's already saying in practice, you know, that's what our scheme is. If you're open, shoot it for almost everyone. So, uh, yeah, I think you'll definitely see a lot more outside game, um, shooting threes and things like that. Next question from Neil. Hey, Fee, um, just wondering if you're going to lead the league in minutes played and if you want to lead the league in minutes played again this season. Uh, I want to do whatever is needed for me for my team. If that's what that looks like, then I'm absolutely 100% down with that. Uh, like I said, whatever the, co the team and coach needs for me, I'm here for. So I think that's more of a question for coach, I guess. <laughs> Next question from Cindy. Good morning. Um, Natisha, I was wondering if you could comment on the coaching change. Our new assistant coaches, um, Katie Smith and Rebecca Brunson, and how they're fitting in and working with you all. I love having them. It's so nice having um, Coach PP, Coach Rebecca, Coach Katie, three former players on our staff. Um, it's so nice to learn from them because they were in our shoes not that long ago. So they understand what we're going through and can relate to it really well. And so learning from them is so fun. And I mean, for example, Rebecca is the leading rebounder for, you know, a couple more games until still be able to get it. But just the knowledge that she has to share, Katie having done so well in her career, Pete doing done well in her career, just having three awesome players as coaches now, it's been so cool. So I'm excited to continue to learn from them. Next question from Eric. I see. Uh, with the roster turnover from last year to this year, I was just wondering, how does this year's group feel different than last year's? Um, I think it's nice that we have, even though we do have, you know, a lot of new people, we still have people who have been on the team last year. I think there's only like three returners, um, last year on the team. We have a little bit more this year, at least. So it's nice to kind of have that group that was together last year. We kind of know what we're doing and we know the system. So it's easier, I think, for us to help coach because it's not, you know, 10 on whatever the coaching staff is. There's like a little bit more people helping the new 
guys and things like that. Um, but I love the chemistry that we have on our team so far. Everyone is such a great person. So it was really good to, great to get to know them before the season started. And I really think it'll transition onto the court because when you love your teammates, you want to work hard for them and you want to do everything you can to make them look good on the court to win for them. So um, I definitely think that's something you'll see from the links this year on the court. Next question from Jace. Hey, Nafisa, um, I know the situation's different for everyone um, and versus a traditional year, but I'm just wondering with training camp, you know, you guys, you don't have guys to practice against and obviously not all the amenities that you know, Clinic Square has. So has training camp felt different at all in that sense? Have things been a little different? Um, just with, I guess what you have around you? Everything feels different. Uh, but something that really helps again is having those three coaches that were players. They're able to um, kind of do stuff that practice players would be able to do. So we get to go against them a little bit. And I mean, they're great players, so it's hard still guarding them. Um, so we've been really fortunate in that, that we have like three kind of built in practice players, but we're still working just as hard as we did last year, still doing those things. And we go against each other. So that's harder than going against practice players. Cause when you go against your teammates, they know what you like to do. They know where you're going. They know what the play is. So you have to be a little bit more creative and mentally locked in, which is good for us. We have a question from Katie. Um, on Saturday, I think it was Saturday, at least Cheryl brought up that she feels like when she's implementing offense this season, she's taking a little bit more time and not throwing quite as much at you guys as last year. I just remember last year, you guys talking about like how thick the playbook was and everything. Have you noticed a difference between the two seasons and how do you feel like slowing things down a little bit will um, benefit your team? I have noticed a difference. I was joking with someone the other day. It's like one day it felt like we put in 15 plays last year. I'm just like, I don't know how we're going to learn all these. Uh, but with such a short season and such a short training camp, there's no way we could have the playbook that we did last year. So we're really focusing on things that like our core plays that are really going to get something good for us and be beneficial for us. So I think it's great, especially having a lot of new people, um, not throwing too many plays at us right now and just kind of because like I said, we don't have enough time to kind of do that, but getting good ones that are good for us, good for our system, down pat. Um, so I think it's been beneficial not having such a big playbook, definitely. Thank you. Next question from Neil. Hi, Fee. I'm wondering here in year two, sort of what, um, you know, in the off season, maybe what sort of um, specific skills you worked on. And I'm just wondering if there's any, been any change um, to your shot motion at all um as far as shooting the ball goes the biggest thing i've been working on is my shot my three-point game um i haven't changed it so much as try to speed it up i felt like it was kind of slow last year and i just want to be uh, more comfortable shooting it from the three so i've been working on that a lot and trying to transition it to the game you know it's hard you get a lot of reps but it's always different when you get into a game situation so it's something that i want to be able to do from the jump and show you know that i've been working on it we have time for one or two more questions, if anyone else has any others. All right, thanks, V. Thank you. Oh, Fee. <laughs> All right, everyone, we have Damiris coming up. Just a reminder for Damiris to please ask your question as clearly as possible and talk um, slowly and loudly. That would be much appreciated from us. Hi, Damiris. Hello. Hi. We will open it up for questions. If anyone wants to throw in the chat that they have a question for Damiris. Go ahead, Katie. Hi, Demiris. Um, just, do you see yourself taking on a larger leadership role this season? Do you see yourself being a leader this season? Mm -hmm. Like a leader, like, like a captain? Um, hi, 
I think um, in the off season, Coach Cheryl talked to me about this. She she said, I want you to play here, same you play in a national team. So be ready for this. Um, I'm trying. <laughs> Next question from Neil. Hi, Damaris. Um, last season, you shot more three-point shots than any other season in your career. Um, why did that happen? And do you think it will go up again this year? Yeah, I think I missed, uh, they shooting my shoots, but the coach Cheryl say, do you, do you, do your game, uh, play, create um, opportunities for you. Uh, play same you in the off season. I need more Demuris here. We have a question from Eric. Hi, Demiris. So coronavirus has also hit uh, Brazil pretty hard. I was just wondering if your uh, family and friends were okay. Is this situation in Brazil? Yeah, you just talk about how um, in Brazil, coronavirus, you know, it's, you know, everyone's safe, everyone's okay. Yeah, the situation in Brazil now is very hard, hard but uh, my family, it's okay, but uh, now it's not it's not, it's not funny, a lot of problems. So yeah, it's very hard. Eric, you can go ahead with your follow-up. Sure. Um, and then just, uh, did you have any concerns uh, about playing this year? Were you like, hesitant when you didn't think about playing or not playing this year? Like, did you want to play this year or not? Yeah, yeah. I want to play this year. <laughs> Every game, I want to play. <laughs> One more question from Katie. With that, just what are you most excited about for this season? Oh. Uh, I think it's not only uh, I'm say um, um, I want to play more more comfort in my in myself. I think this uh, more I don't know I'm say more comfortable. Yeah, more comfort. We have time for a couple more questions, if anyone has any others. All right, thank you, Damaris. Thank you.
Come on, man. You can sit up there all day. should be coming uh, with Sill any minute now. Uh, just a reminder to make sure if you're on the call to mute your line. Much appreciated. Thank you. This morning, you killed me. <laughs> Hi, Phil. Good morning. Oh, y'all hear me talking trash? <laughs> <laughs> Dang, Freeman. <laughs> they killed me early this morning. We will get started with some questions. Again, just a reminder to make sure you mute your line. Uh, but we will start with a question from Kent. Hey, still, uh, uh, Coach, just morning. Coach just talked so much about having more people on the floor who can space the court and take the three. How do you think that is going to affect how teams can play you? Um, hopefully, this is a good effect uh, to, to take away the triples and double teams. Um, but you have to keep them honest, and we have to keep them honest. And I think we have the players to do that this year um, that can shoot beyond the arc. And so it's pretty much going to be like pick your poison this year, and I'm looking forward to it. So next question from Katie. Hi, so Sil. What have you learned from Kayla Alexander so far this year? Kayla. Um, I learned that she's a hard worker. Um, she don't take no and I just love the simple fact that she's willing to go out there and do anything that's asked of her, even if it's out of her comfort zone. And so that's something that you can appreciate about a, a backup player. Thank you. Next question from Mitchell. Hey, Syl, thanks for doing this. Um, I was just wondering, you know, in the past, Cheryl has talked about, you know, early on in the season, um, it's nice to kind of kick off the season with a, a road trip. 
an early mm-hmm. season road trip to kind of help them bond it. Does it kind of feel like an extended road trip to some extent with, with this, uh, you know, down in Florida so far? Um, extended road trip? Definitely, yes. Um, I guess every game will be like a, a road trip game here. So we pretty much just have to get used to just the pieces moving around us. And um, I'm looking forward to kicking off the season and see how this thing is going to pan out. And um, hopefully it'll be fun. Have you seen that helping with with bonding already? Yeah, and that's not a problem. Bonding is never a problem for us. Uh, like I said before, I think we do a pretty good job at together before we even get on the court. And so I think all our personalities match. It's just a, a matter of fact of when we're going to get out there on the court and know each other. But for the most part, I think the match has been there since day one. Question from Jace. Hey, so obviously this camp's different for every team and every player, but, you know, you guys, you, know, you have the practice players normally, the technology with the shot angles at Mayo Clinic Square, all the amenities there. How different, I guess, has this been? And has your routine had to change at all with this? Um, I guess I'm just wondering, in these first few days, just what differences have you mostly noticed just with the, the practice part of it? Um, I think we've pretty much been rolling with the punches for the most part as a, a team collectively. Um, we still get film. I don't know how they do it. I didn't even know they was filming half our practices, but um, we still get film of practices that we've been doing. Um, we still get video on the things that we need to work on. So it hadn't been any different if we was at Mayo with the players. I mean, with the coaches, because we still get those things here as well. A question from Neil. Hey, so um, sort of piggybacking off that question, you know, about, you know, so your surroundings being different. If you just, you know, just look at basketball, just look at the roster, what's going to be different about the way the team plays this season? Um, I think it'd be more free. Um, in the past, I think we were very systematic of how Cheryl wanted to run things, but I think she's kind of opening up to just letting people be them and playing the way they're capable of playing, but at the same time, still keeping those basic foundations of what makes the link successful. Now we'll get into some follow-up questions, uh, starting with Mitchell. Um, next question I had was, um, obviously, the, the the coaching staff is a little bit different this year. What What's yeah. it been like to to have some of those new yet old faces on the, on the coaching staff, and how do you think that they'll help this year? Um, it's been great. Um, I feel like we haven't missed a beat. I feel like uh, Clement and BB are still players because they bring so much to the table. Um, having Katie May here is definitely is going to be a game changer for us because I think she's that one who keep Cheryl in line. Um, Planet is like very like player oriented. She wants to know like how we feel and how we doing. Do we run plays? Do we know the plays? Or do we need anything? And Rebecca is like that coach that makes sure you out there getting it right. So she's like a piggyback off Katie to make sure Cheryl don't be on that neck. So. I think it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing all them together on the sidelines. So far, uh, it's been pretty good. Question from Katie. What advice do you have for your new teammates who are not only like yourself trying to get accustomed to this new season and everything that's going on in Florida, but who are also competing for minutes and trying to prove themselves on this team? Um, first understanding like what you bring to the team like don't try to step outside of your comfort zone to do anything else that not asked of you be yourself um and just come willing to work I mean I think minutes is going to pan out we're a new team uh this thing looks different so anybody who Cheryl can trust is going to be out there on the floor at any given day so I don't think they should worry about minutes too much just worry about like the things that you can do that you see from the sideline. And when you step on the court, how can you make it better? Thank you. A question from Neil. Hey, so um, as a native Floridian, I'm just wondering what it's like to, in a way, <laughs> sort of be home, be sort you're sort of home. You're not, you know, in Miami, but you're in your right. home state. How is that? And then what are the best and worst things about Florida? Um, I can definitely say it feels good being home, but it sucks being home because the last couple of years, everybody was like, oh, when you come to the Florida play, I'm like, we don't have teams in Florida to play now, but now we're here and nobody can't come, which is the sucky part of it. Um, the good thing about Florida is you get sunshine year round. 
the sucky thing is it probably rained like 10 times in one day and get like 10 degrees hotter every time. And the mosquitoes is like terrible here. <laughs> Question from Jace. So you talked about how you guys might be a little less systematic this year. Um, what's it like seeing Cheryl, I guess, kind of let go of the reins a little bit and, and do, you, do you get the sense that she struggles with that from time to time? Um, I don't think she struggled at all. I think she's at a point where she knows that um, these players are new. These young players play at a different pace. Um, and so you have to have different teaching strategies. So I think she's outside of her comfort zone to make sure that we're okay on the court. Um, if you ask me, I say she's gotten soft over the last couple of years. I don't know if because she getting these young kids coming in and they need a little tender love and care. I don't know what it is, but she's gotten soft definitely over the last couple of years. But it's funny to see her step outside of her element to try new things. We have time for one or two more questions if anyone has any others for sale. Go ahead, Eric. Hi, Sil. Good morning. Um, I was just wondering, how does this uh, year's group feel different from last year's with all of the turnover? Uh, besides the new faces? Um, <laughs> um, just understanding of what this, what it's going to take. Um, this definitely is a, a, a weird year due to COVID. Um, so just making sure that everybody is on the same page that we have one thing in mind and that's to go out there and compete on every level. And um, I can say that is different and definitely not being at Target or at Mayo to be able to practice on for our fans is definitely different as well. Awesome, thank you, Syl, for your time. Thank today. you. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have Cheryl coming up in a couple of minutes, guys. Y'all make sure y'all tell Cheryl I say she got this off.
Hi, Coach. Morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Great. We'll uh, kick it off with a question from Kent. Hi, Kent. Morning, Coach. Uh, you've talked a lot here about having a team that can stretch the floor, space the floor better than maybe you've had in a long time. And I, I'm curious, a couple of questions. How will that affect Syl in your mind? And, and Damaris too, because she was so important in your being able to get up threes last year and she was obviously was very good at it, but with other people capable of doing that, how do you think her role will change? Well, I, I think for Syl, it's the obvious. Uh, you know, you have to make a choice and teams are making choices that uh, anybody can shoot but Syl. Um, and, and we didn't necessarily position ourselves all that well personnel wise last year with the ability to really help her. If you look at our starting group of Danielle Robinson, Odyssey Sims and Fisa Collier, that doesn't act actually uh, scream spacing. Uh, and, and so we, you know, we spent the season, you know, trying to be creative and, and, and different ways to score. And, and uh, you know, we were a decent offensive team. We just turned the thing over too much. Uh, and then we just got to this point where it's just unfair to still for her to have to handle. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're not going to choose to, to do the same thing and, and double and triple team her. It's just, I think we have the ability now to make teams pay for that. So we don't have to continue to force it inside to be successful. Uh, and, and so that's the plan. And regarding Demiris, um, you know, she was half of our three point attack last year. You know, if she didn't shoot 10 threes a game, we had a hard time getting to 20 attempts. Uh, and that's just, you know, in this day and age, that's just not going to work, especially when you have a center like Sill. So, um, you know, Demiris passing the ball, uh, was really good. You know, we really counted on her in that area as well as the threes. Uh, and so now we can we can share the load as far as three point attempts. It's not going to fall uh, so much to Demir's. Next question from Jace. Hey Cheryl, you've talked a little bit about condensing the playbook this year, and and Sylvia said she thinks you guys will be less systematic. I guess what made you come to the realization that that change was needed, and was there anything else um, I guess that you looked at back at it last year that needed to change as well moving forward here? Um, you know, I, I'd say probably the, the biggest impetus is you don't have Lindsay Whalen. You don't have, you know, someone like her uh, that excels at play calling, excels at understanding, um, you know, uh, on time, on target, and, and, and really picking apart people. Um, and so now we're a little more by committee. Um, and so, you know, we, we had a true point guard on the roster last year, starter in Danielle Robinson. Um, you know, not her strength uh, in terms of play calling. Uh, and so we just, you know, we just, we just got to that place where we said, okay, this is, uh, you know, the next time we can, we can get someone like a Lindsay Whalen, we'll certainly be interested. Uh, but until that day, um, you know, we're going to have to be non-traditional and you're going to see multiple initiators in the offense. Next question from Ian. Can you talk about uh, what you've seen from Crystal so far and what you envision her role for this season to be? Yeah, Crystal, uh, exactly as we thought. Uh, I, I watched Crystal a lot uh, throughout her college career, talked with the UConn staff quite a bit uh, about Crystal. Um, you know, she'll be early, at, at minimum, she'll be a steady point guard, uh, a steady backup point guard in this league, uh, at minimum. Uh, I'm not sure, you know, I have to get in the trenches a little bit further with her to really understand uh, where the growth is necessary. And uh, I haven't had this conversation with Crystal yet, and, and we will, that um, sometimes she might, might be the best uh, point guard that we have on our team, but it's not going to matter uh, because we're going to be playing the players uh, that are ahead of her. Uh, and so this is more of, um, you know, uh, more over time. You know, we know we want Crystal Dangerfield in the Minnesota Lynx franchise. Uh, you just may not see that, um, you know, the affinity that we have for her right away translating into minutes. Uh, and so that's a conversation that we have with players and, and I think that uh, uh, she'll handle that tremendously. Thank you. You're welcome. Next question from Eric. Hey coach. Hey, Eric. Uh, with the season being compacted the way it is this year, uh, reducing the amount of on-court time you have with your team, both in practice and in games. How much do you think that crunch will impact your ability to evaluate your roster uh, this year and going forward? Now, we're probably going to learn the most in games, uh, so I don't think that will necessarily impact. The only thing that will impact our ability to evaluate is my, my inability 
uh, to play people uh, the way I want to play people because uh, I can't evaluate if they're sitting on the bench. Um, so I won't necessarily have practice uh, to do that evaluation, but um, you know, our, our plan is to, is to sort of widen um, you know, the, the idea of sharing, especially in the backcourt. That's probably the biggest area. You're going to see Nafisa Fowler on the floor 30 minutes. Uh, I don't want you to see Sylvia Fowles on the floor for 30 minutes. Uh, you know, Damaris, you know, we, we um, you know, physically wore Damaris out last year playing both four and five. I just think this roster is better, better suited for us uh, to be able to play multiple people. And, you know, the game will dictate who you see a little bit more of in terms of how each, each of the players is playing. But um, I, I think the best evaluation is going to come from, you know, putting them in the game. And, uh, and that it makes a lot of sense that this type of season, uh, you know, for where our franchise is, you know, we, we need to really see what we have. Uh, so we can make decisions about what the future would hold. Question from Katie. Coach, um, there's so much uncertainty regarding this season, and a lot of those questions, probably there won't be solutions for them for quite some time. How do you deal with that uncertainty, and how do you also get your players to come to terms with it? I don't necessarily see uncertainty at this point. Uh, a month ago, a great deal of uncertainty. At this point, it's all mapped out for us. We finally got the schedule. Uh, we know what our daily schedule looks like. We know who's here. Um, we, you know, we, we're going to learn a little bit more you know, from, from games and who can handle what. But uh, I don't really see uncertainty at this point. I see us really now being able to focus on what we're doing, what we're here for, um, and how we're going to utilize the personnel. Those are the conversations that we have with our staff. Uh, so I think things are actually clearer for us at this point. Question from Neil. Hey, Cheryl. Um, I'm wondering what you think about um, the schedule that came out and sort of like the frequency of games. And I'm wondering um, how much um, like the not traveling from city to city will help with rest and recovery. Yeah, I wish we had more home games. Uh, or actually, this isn't a year that I can say that we have the same number of home as we do road, it's 11 and 11. Uh, so I'll use all those uh, things just for fun. Um, you know, we, we uh, in, in terms of frequency of games, I'll be really honest with you, the players would much rather be playing games than being in practice. Uh, the only people that don't like the schedule and the frequency of games and limited practice are the coaches. Uh, so I think, you know, in terms of uh, where they will be as we get out of training camp, they'll be tired of training camp. You know, we get this next segment of, of four days of practice we get to that fourth day, they're going to be you know, looking at the calendar. When the heck is our first game? Um, so they'll be over this training camp and practice thing and be ready for games. Um, you know, there's a couple nice breaks, actually probably three where we've got two or three days, which actually surprised me. I, I didn't know that we would be able to have that. Um, uh, so, um, you know, you get to a certain point, play games, you're going to get slippage. But you know, I guess the nice thing is everybody's in the same boat. Um, you know, you're playing everybody twice, um, you know, we can we can talk about the what it appears to be a a, a strong schedule, a difficult schedule coming out of the gates for us. Four games, six days uh, against teams that were really good last year. Two against a team that was in the finals, um, you know, and then a team that won the championship in, in 2018, uh, and then obviously a team that that I think is really good in Chicago Sky. So um, you know, it's but we got to play everybody twice, and you know, just like we would always do that, um, you know while you want to start off well, you know, you know that it's, you know, it's not necessarily a long season, but you know that you have 18 more games uh, after that stretch. Next question from Mitchell. Cheryl, I have uh, two quick questions for you. Um, first one, um, you know, in, in the past, you've talked about the importance of early season road trips. You know, if you start off a year by going on an extended road trip, it might help with bonding and kind of the team getting acclimated to each other. Does it feel like that's kind of the extended version of that case right now? And how has that helped so far? Yeah, I mean, I, but it, it, you know, it's true for every team. We're all in the same boat. So I don't necessarily think, I don't see any advantages. Um, you know, it's what's exposed is, is your decisions uh, as far as the people that you bring into your franchise in times like these. Uh, and, and that's where we feel really confident, you know, that, um, you know, the, to this point, this, this, um, this experience together, that includes our Zoom calls, that includes our time in Minneapolis in the market before we, we came down here, that you know, we, we just have a group that um, you know, I think is equipped to handle uh, adversity, difficult times in the season, anything that might happen, 
because at the core of who uh, I would say pretty much every player that we have on the roster uh, that's here is, is a really good person. Uh, and, and so it's, it's built that way, but by design. So I believe that culture, um, you know, something that the Minnesota Lynx have been uh, noted for uh, over the last decade is, is going to be really valuable. Um, you know, and, and so I think that's, um, you know, that's something that we're going to focus on, continue to treat each other well. Uh, I will absolutely share Lindsay Whalen's quote. Uh, I do it every year, probably multiple times a year, whether I'm in season, out of season, uh, telling stories that uh, probably the greatest thing she ever said to our team uh, was when we were hitting difficult times. Um, that, and, and we talked about it a lot, you know, teams that you can break because they hit adversity and they fall apart. They don't know how to treat each other when things are difficult. Uh, when you're up 10, everybody's, everybody's in good shape. When you're down 10, you start to see, you know, some, so, some cracks, uh, so to speak. And then it's true over a season as well. Um, and, and Lindsay Whalen, um, you know, very wisely said, um, I don't care what happens, just treat each other well. Uh, and that resonated. Um, it's who we were. Um, and, and, but, you know, but stating it, uh, I thought was really powerful. And it's something now that we don't have that group. Uh, it's something that, that, that we use, um, you know, that, you know, in difficult times because I want to play against a team that doesn't treat each other very well in difficult times. And then that, that kind of feeds into my follow-up um, of the, you know, kind of the people that you've brought in with, you know, Planet Pearson and, and the assistant coaching staff or not Planet was, um, or I guess Rebecca Brunson this year and Katie Smith as, as new faces, you have familiar faces, but how has that helped too with, um, you know, kind of mixing them with the, with the players, even though there is some familiarity already within that group. Uh, I, you know, every day uh, after I'm, I spend the day uh, with our team and having those coaches around, being in meetings with them, I just think about um, what, what, a, what a tremendous um, decision it was to, to hire each of the, uh, the people that we have and the positions that we have them in. Um, incredibly valuable in preparing teams because they have done it and they've done it at a high level. Um, you know, I've learned, I've learned a lot uh, in, in being around them. Um, and so I think it's helpful because you said that, you know, they've been through it. Uh, and, you know, if you're around practice and, you know, which you know, I apologize that you can't be here, you know, to kind of see maybe Aaron Freeman can get something going where we can have media avail, at least some B roll or something the last 15 minutes of practice, if he's willing. Uh, he's also been our video coordinator here. Uh, I've been very, very impressive. So I think he'd be able to, to pull that off. But um, and if you see those three working, um, they're very, very involved. They're very vocal, a um, little bit of demonstration, but the, the intricacies of what they share uh, is just invaluable. Um, you know, and I, I might be able to, to recognize it and, and, and want to point it out. It's just different coming from, from those three. So uh, that has gone extremely well. All right, guys, we're going to do last four questions, um, and then uh, Coach will wrap up. We're going to go in this order, Kent, Jace, Katie, and Alexa. So, Kent, if you're ready, go ahead. Make this real quick. Uh, Syl made sure to ask us to ask you about her saying that you've gone soft on the young kids over the last couple of years. Do you agree with that, or is that just a, a change in style on your part? Um. I, I think I would agree. I don't, I don't know that soft was ever a word associated with me. Um, so maybe relative uh, to, you know, 2015 to, to 2017, I think really in 2018, there was some sense of, of, of that changing a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, the recognition that sometimes they, they probably need me uh, by their side um, a, a little more, uh, particularly this group, as they learn as they learn about the culture. Um, I, I wanna say the word patient, but I think I'm a little more patient, but I, I, you know, then I really think about that and I just laugh because I don't think that's it at all. Um, I, I think maybe more perspective. I've gained so much perspective uh, in my time as, as the Lynx coach. And, um, you, know, um, you know, four championships in seven years taught us so much um, that I think I'm better able to handle um, you know, the ebbs and flows of a season and, and what's necessary. All right, uh, next question, we will go uh, to Jace. Jace, go ahead. Sure, obviously the, 
you know, the amenities, the technology that you guys normally have at Mayo Clinic Square is awesome. Um, and you, you use the practice players, obviously. Um, wondering how things compare with what you have down there versus what you have up here and maybe any adaptations you've had to make uh, because of that? Yeah, that's probably the biggest thing we're feeling is we don't, we don't have that, um, the tools, um, you know, that, that we have, the, the, the comfort that really no other team in the league has. Um, and, and so, um, you know, it, it, I don't let them focus on that. We focus on what we do have and we try to make, we don't want them to know what we go through to try to, um, to, to get, but I, probably the biggest thing is the video technology. Um, you know, we have cameras in the practice facility and we have instant, instant video that that process is still, um, you know, being worked through, you know, to be able to, to get, um, you know, more uh, ability to cut up practice to, to share it with players. Um, but otherwise, I mean, you just, you, you can't focus on what you don't have. You know, we, we're all in the same boat and you just got to figure out how to be effective with what you do have. And that's where our, our mindset stays. Uh, next question is from Katie, and then we'll go to Alexa to wrap it up. Katie, go ahead. Um, this morning, Lexi said that she feels like she's kind of a vet on this team, even though this is one, her third season in the league and second just on this team. What growth have you seen since her first year with you? Uh, maturity. Uh, that's a very simple word uh, that I see with Lexi is maturity. Uh, I think doing something for a second time. This is the first time that she's done something for a second time in the WNBA. Um, and, and so I think that's, we have seen that. We have seen, um, you know, when you know more what to expect and, and, and you know, you're just more comfortable. Just think about in all of your lives and, you know, when you do something for a second time, well, that's what Lexi's going through. So that maturity, um, you know, handling, you know, I think understanding what I want and need from her, what her teammates want and need from her from an emotional intelligence position. Um, you know, I think that recognition is there. And uh, yeah, I, I would, so I, I would agree with Lexi that uh, she, she certainly looks more comfortable and, and uh, has, has very much a veteran feel to her. Uh, we're going to go with Alexa and then we'll wrap up. Just a reminder, uh, coach will be available after practice uh, every day um, during camp and for the you know, rest of the season. So um, if you don't get your question in today, we'll be sure to get it in tomorrow. So Alexa, go ahead. Hi, Coach. Uh, I was wondering if you could talk about how Fees looks so far in training camp and also just what the next step for her is, um, you know, not just basketball-wise, but as a leader in this franchise. Yeah. Um, you know, she's another one. I think, again, she just, you know, last year as a rookie, she just handled things so well. But uh, training camp was one that I think she would probably point to as um, uh, her more difficult time uh, as a WNBA player, just kind of being thrust into it. You, you know, she was just weeks away from being in the final four, being drafted, uh, and then all the newness, changing positions. Um, so I, I see the same thing with her, you know, that um, as the season evolved last year, you know, she, she like you said, she, she became one of our better leaders. Uh, so I think she's well positioned, again, knowing things, coming back for a second time, uh, where, you know, it's important for her to uh, impose her, uh, her voice, her will, um, and then just being able to, you know, uh, to, to know what to expect as a player. Uh, she looks considerably more comfortable in this training camp than she did in her rookie training camp. All right, All right thanks, thanks y'all. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll be sure to send the recording out and appreciate you uh, taking the time today. So have a great rest of the day. Thank you.